Realty Tracy. I'm your moderator today. I'm also a candidate for Clark County Commission District F. We'd like to thank our panel for joining us today. Robert Faust, U.S. Army. Steve Sanson, Jr., U.S. Army. Francis Tomagan, <coughs> VIP Radio co-host. Michael McDonald, VIP Legislation Council. We'd also like to thank our sponsors today. Ron Q. for Clark County Treasurer. Michael Broadway Real Estate. Real Water. Lakeside Business Suites. Today we have our Clark County Public Administrator candidates, Aaron Manifred and Robert Tejas. We're going to begin uh, with Robert here to ask a question. If you could, uh, we're going to start with your opening statements. If you can limit to a minute, please. You got it. So my name is Rob Tejas, and I'm running for the Clark County Public Administrator. I am endorsed by the Clark County Public Administrator, John Cahill. I'm a probate attorney, and for many folks that don't know, the Clark County Public Administrator is a probate administrator for states where next of kin cannot be found. So that makes me uniquely qualified for the position. On top of that, while I was in law school, I was working by day. So I understand the, the need for hard work in, in many positions. I understand that when it comes to government, folks want to see their, their elected officials work hard and deliver results. You know, so that, between the fact that I'm qualified and I'm dedicated, I believe I'm the right candidate to receive the endorsement and receive everyone's vote. My name is Aaron Manfredi. I'm a candidate for Clark County Public Administrator. I've been in Las Vegas for over 20 years. Currently, I'm a nonprofit executive director. I help adults with autism become employed. I have uh, 165 adults with autism and other disabilities are now working because of me. I help disabled veterans, um, ex felons. I'm a, a former law enforcement officer here for Clark County, former educator for Clark County School District and Faith Lutheran. I sit on several nonprofit boards. I'm also a goal for veteran. And I have a lot of administration and executive director experience, and I'm looking forward to uh, starting next year in this uh, current position. Robert Faust, U.S. Army VIP member. So can you identify a, a problem in that office that you can come in and remedy right away? Absolutely. I met with John Cahill for about two or three hours about a month ago, and I had the opportunity of sitting down with him to hear some of the things that he has concerns, and he's the current one that's there. One of the biggest things that we spoke about is public awareness. This position's been around since 1909, and nobody knows about it. Everywhere I go, I'm talking about it on social media, I'm talking about it in person, and, and nobody understands how valuable this is, especially when you're dealing with probate. It's one of the most important things to deal with. So um, staffing, uh, me and John talked about staffing. I went in there, there's uh, only five, seven full-time staff that needs to be doubled. They're sharing. Uh, they're staffing with the guardianship, which split in uh, 2000. A lot of part-timers. Uh, the problem with having too many part-timers is, is they're not being efficient. We also need to get out there and talk to community centers and put the word out on how valuable this is. Uh, no social media. There's not a whole lot of meet and greets going on. So we need somebody to, uh, to go out there and, and really put the fourth effort in and, and make sure everybody understands this. Right now, the Clark County Public Administrator has a thousand open files. There are families who are calling into that office every day to ask why their cases aren't getting pushed forward. A lot of it does have to do with the fact that it is understaffed. Um, you know, John has fought to get those, those staff members in. Um, I do believe, beyond the fact that now we'll have a second voice who says the same thing, that we need the additional funding to get the staff in place, there's also the idea that, you know, as being a, a public administrator, you know, you, you've got to have certain policies and procedures in place. As I said before, I'm a probate attorney. I advise administrators every day on how to handle their matters. For my own firm, I've got in, in place many detailed procedures, ways to make operation of a firm very efficient. And so when I do get back, whoops, should I? And I do believe that with the help of, of voters, I will get into that office. That I will go into that office, I will work on making sure that it is running as efficiently as possible with the resources it has, and then head back to, to the county and, and let them know that, look, I've done everything that I can to make sure that this office is running well, and we still need your help. My goal, too, is to make sure that without burdening Clark County, without burdening families, um, I would like to see that the Clark County Public Administrator bring more fees into the, the county, and the part of that is the fact that if it is running more efficiently, the office will be able to take more cases. 
unfortunately, it has to refer out cases where there's money that the county can make. Um, so they refer it to private administrators because they're overburdened right now. So uh, I think <coughs> a certain investment in time and resources, that, that challenge, that big challenge, that, that is the biggest challenge for the office. I, I believe that we, we can tackle that. It's going to take time, but I believe we can handle it. Mr. Sanson Jr., U.S. Army. So it seems like one of your biggest issues is staffing. Um, what obstacles do you see in uh, tackling that issue, and uh, what would you do to overcome it? I think the major thing here is the fact that the county, for whatever reason, allocates its resources in, in whatever ways, right? Um, of course, it is very important to make sure that our first responders are funded before anyone else. You know, our, our firefighters, our policemen, they need to have the right gear, they need to have, you know, the right training. They, they, they need to come first. However, I, I think, too, that without the resources for the public administrator, um, we can't get in a position where we can be a revenue source for the county. And so I think that convincing the county that that is a justified expense is going to be the hardest hurdle to, to meet. I, and I do believe that, again, providing the, the information that I can um, after having done everything I can to make it an efficient office, I believe that I'll be able to provide a, a very good case for the county to, to give us more funding. How do we prove to the county management that we need staffing? We can go there and talk to them all day long until they're blue in the face, but we have to have something in our hand. We have to have personal research. One of the things I want to do when we get in there is have an internal audit, better known as a performance evaluation. So that is something I can bring to them and say, here's why our cases are so low. Here's why everybody's working so many hours. Um, these are things that need a change. And having that relationship with county management and knocking on their door every single day, there's a lot of people that are fighting for the same staff. And some of them will always outweigh this department. But it gets to the point where people working 60, 70 hours a week is unacceptable. It's not fair to their families, and it's not fair to the public. What good are they if they're working all these hours? How efficient are they going to be? So we have to go to the county and explain to them why we need staffing. And so that's one of the things that I want to do. I want to prove it to them um, with, you know, with the evaluation and uh, back it up. Some of the duties of the public administrator are uh, to advocate for people who cannot advocate for themselves. Do you think it's fair to entrust those duties to somebody who has been prosecuted multiple times for violent crimes? Uh, first and foremost, I have a disorderly conduct, so I do not have any felonies, and you can't have a felony if you're running for public office, okay? I will say this, I came here today not to hide behind the curtain, and I will talk about this uh, along the campaign trail. I have now and will continue to do so. I was falsely accused. And the documents that are in my documents, for those that have looked at it, carefully will understand and know that this is, these are false allegations. So to, to answer your question, I am qualified, and I'll continue to serve my public like I have been. Like I said, law enforcement, education, current nonprofit executive director. If my integrity was questioned, I wouldn't be sitting on nonprofit boards, or nor would I be involved in all these different organizations. I believe that the uh, Review Journal did publish an article on that, and I'm certain that they didn't want, they did not want to subject themselves to any type of libel or defamation suit. So, you know, the, the fact that it appears that Mr. Manfredi was charged with felonies in two different matters, again, that that's out there. Um, it, from what I understand, he took a plea deal on the first, and he went to trial on the second, and, and won on the second. But again, uh, other than to say that that's out there and there's a story on it. I, I guess if you want to answer about qualification and whether or not such a person should be allowed to be in that position, I, I guess my personal opinion is no, but again, that's up to the voters to decide. Michael McDonald, BIPI Legislative Council. Um, uh, Bad Wednesday, the Liberty Union, and uh, Storm Freedom. Um, I, I've got a, a question, a two-part question about uh, guardianship and uh, and uh, probate. So, 
So one of the, recently, I don't know if you guys are aware, there's a, a documentary coming out called The, the, the Guardians, and it, it was that the, the family courts and others were, were preying on our most vulnerable citizens, our senior citizens, and taking their assets, putting them in, in mental hospital, or when they, they, when they uh, are deceased, would go after their properties and take, take their assets, and the attorneys and the, the family courts would, would take over their assets, appoint a guardian ad litem. Uh, if elected, uh, to that public administrative role, would you make sure that that fraud and that that, that corruption is ended, and making sure that, that that the assets go to next of kin, and make sure that 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 they are uh, their assets are not uh, seized by the government? Oh, it's almost a civil forfeiture. And then my second part is the probate uh, process is is extremely long. A lot of people wait years and uh, needless lit litigation for 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 years until the until they can finally have some finality. So if elected that, that position, would you, would you take steps to make sure that the probate is, is, is a streamlined process that, that is, is, a, uh, is afforded a, a quicker, quicker means to, to finalize uh, a, a ready, a ready uh, uh, emotional process? So thank you. So with respect to guardianship, um, I've, I've assisted families in pro bono representation in fact, against one of the, the folks that was you know, allegedly stealing money from, from her wards. Um, we were able to get a victory, maybe a pure victory, because unfortunately we got a judgment for $100,000. We don't believe that we're able to collect on it, but I do care about what happens to families. Um, right now I've got another case where I was helping to fight off guardianship by a private guardian when an 80-year-old man's mother was 100, uh, wanted to make decisions for him, and private guardian decided to step in and try to override her. Uh, luckily, we were able to find a, a family member to step in and help, and now everything's going to be a okay. But that I did on a pro bono basis as well. I, I really sincerely care about making sure that the families are protected. Um, I won the pro bono attorney of the year for Nevada Legal Services a couple of years ago. Um, I, I think it's wrong what happened in, in guardianship. And I've, I've very much advocated for, for greater protections. Now there was legislation that was passed that, that did in fact you know, enact certain protections for, for wards. I kind of feel as though you know, beyond the fact this legislation is there, perhaps the public needs to keep a, a close eye on, on some of the private guardians still yet. I think there's they're still questionable situations. So, for me, I would certainly continue to advocate for the protection of families and guardianship. Uh, I believe that guardianship is not always the first answer. It really needs to be the last answer. And I will continue to advocate for that in whatever arena allowed. With respect to probate, I do believe that for many families, that process can be streamlined. I mean, a lot of times when the estate is below a certain value, you've got a process that can take all of about 30 days. To get, to get those assets transferred. Um, you know, when you want to get in, into the office, I'll have to see exactly how they're structuring their, their resources. We may end up dedicating one person to that particular process, right? So that they can spend all day just knocking those petitions out, getting them in and out. Because when the process can truly take just 30 days and it's taking longer, that it's a disservice to the clients you know, and I don't fault John for it. I, I think that there's a lot going on in that office. Again, with the shortage of staffing, but like I said, I, I think that when I get in there, we can see about instituting a few more efficiencies to make things run a little better and serve families better. When I get in the office, we will we will speed the process up, no doubt about that, because you need staffing. Uh, right now, there's no field supervisor watching the staff that goes out inventories items from a house, so how do you build transparency? Sure, there's two people involved, but the coroner's office does go in there, take some pictures of you know, high valuable items, but they can't take pictures of everything. So one of the things I like to do is I like to put body cameras on the part-time staff that are going in people's houses and inventorying stuff. It's only fair to protect us, to protect them, and to protect the public. Guardianship split from this office in 2000, so it's a separate entity, and it should be. It's two different walks of life. Um, so there's in the past this office and this is you know it was you know, 20 years ago 
Um, I was not even in town yet, but there was a problem with that. And I tell you the other issue with, with elected officials in positions like this is nobody's keeping an eye on them. I don't care who you are and what position you have, everybody needs somebody to watch them. So how do we do that? And county management acts as a liaison to this department, but there's nobody really watching and keeping an eye on it, and somebody has to. So somebody's got to take charge and start doing all the recorder, the assessor, all these offices, uh, perfect examples, all the stuff going on with the constable's office is that nobody's watching anybody. So I would like somebody to watch this office, whatever it entails, if they want to do audits, they want to come in, whatever it is that they need, it needs to be supervised and watched. Everybody has somebody to answer to. Robert Faust, I have no questions, thank you. Steve Sanson, Jr. Um, my next question is, everybody has something near and dear in their heart when it comes to elected office. Um, if elected, what's the very first uh, very first task that, you'll, that you'd like to see accomplished, aside from staff? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, the public awareness. Sure, you got to go in there and learn the job. It's rather, it's me or you know, Rob. There's still a learning process that has to take place, and that, that comes first. We got to learn the job. We got to make sure that everything's um, lined up. We got to make sure that the process is continuing, right, without getting behind. Um, and we really have to start letting the public know that this position exists. 98% of the people that I speak to about this have no idea it exists. This has been around since 1909, it's disturbing. So, we, so how do we do that? PSAs, newsletters, publications, going to different centers, uh, senior centers, even youth centers, it doesn't matter. The, the fact is, everybody has got to learn about this position. What is that gonna entail? That means coming out of the office under regular work hours and spending it on the weekends. I'm, I'm single, I have a son that's in college. I had the time to go out there to these different places and spend the time that's needed. So that's what I'm gonna do. Of course, like I said, paramount to this office is getting it under control. You know, it's spending the time working. You know, I, right now my own law firm, and I own my own law firm. I built it from the ground up. You know, didn't have any help from anybody else. I worked hard and I made it happen. Um, and I still work hard to make it happen. You know, I, I work about 80 hours a week. And I, on top of that, I, I campaign. And so, you know, certainly now that I've begun to campaign, um, I've had to push off some of my duties onto others, but still work comes first. And so I believe that going to this office, the work has to come first. I believe that there are other offices that the public just doesn't know about. And I don't think it's hurting them. People don't know, you know about the, the controller, the treasurer, uh, the recorder, the assessor. They don't know what they do. And how is it important that they know? Right? I mean, certainly it'd be nice, but what's important is that the government work. And if government is not working, then it's irrelevant to promote the office. The first things first is you get out there and you do the job and you take what you do whatever it takes to make sure that that office is running well before you go out and decide to go on on campaigns to to promote the office and get out to events daily to, to do anything like that. That's I, again I, I believe that most importantly this office needs to become a resource for the people. One of the people can count on. And so that's my goal. My goal is to do not just one term as a public administrator. This is not, for me, this is not a stepping stone. I want to be the public administrator for years and years to come. I believe I can do a service for the people of Clark County, and, and I believe this is the way that I'm going to do it. Thanks, Mr. Bobby. Um, what is it about this office that you feel is most important that people don't know about just the general public could benefit from if they did know about it um, what would you want them to know so provided the office is under control and we get some uh, some time to do some promotion I believe that the, the public really needs to know that there are people here in Las Vegas who die alone and they die with no evidence of any family in their home and I think what the public 
should probably support is perhaps an organization or initiative to perhaps have the senior citizens check in on, on each other, right? Um, or perhaps other individuals who are concerned with supporting senior citizens, perhaps have them, once again, just checking in on people once in a while, make sure they're okay, making sure that they've, if they have family, that they perhaps have a list of families somewhere. Maybe encourage them to, to do a, a simple estate plan. You can get a will done for $100, and that's evidence that you have family out there. A lot, of, a lot of these folks, they pass away not knowing that they should have made a plan, but sometimes they'll have died with a significant amount of assets. And yet again, when you can't find out who the next of kin is immediately, the public administrator steps in, and, and perhaps that just was not necessary. So again, I, I think that we need to focus on, on awareness of the fact that, that there are our county residents who are, who are dying alone, um, and perhaps somehow try to, try to provide some awareness and encourage folks to check in on each other. Everybody, most people are aware of NRS, the Veteran Revised Statute. This deals with 253, which directly relates to this position. For those that don't know what it is, it's time for them to know. We need to point it out so they can educate themselves. This office does not give legal advice. That's not our job. We're here to inform. We're not here to direct them in any direction at all towards probate. We cannot recommend any lawyers of any sort. Me coming in here from the outside, not knowing, I know a couple of them, but not associating or doing business with them, allows it to be a fair process for everybody, okay? So once they understand this position, they understand the Nevada Revised Statutes and how it relates to them, all we can do is inform them, educate them, and let them make the decisions for themselves. But the biggest thing is they got to know about it. <clears throat> Mike McDonald, um, so I do have a question that was related to that. I'm glad you answered it. Um, if elected, would you would you do more public forums on on wills and and death plans? Because a lot of people um, are leaving this world and, and leaving those behind assets that are unclaimed property that ends up going and funnel going into the, the the county coffers. I believe that that those assets should go to next of kin. And would you do your best to find? The, you know, the relative to, the, to make sure that those funds go there, not just get collected by the city. A lot of times those those funds are, or unclaimed property is, is posted on a wall somewhere and then nobody ever claims it and it goes into the city, or uh, county or uh, the county's cup. So uh, if elected, would you do your best to, to bring about um, making sure those funds go to the family and be informing them and then doing more community outreach and saying, hey, this is, this, this is what happens when you don't have a plan, and, and your assets get get taken by this. You know, it, it's it not taken, but it's it's uh, it could definitely go to your family instead of going to the government. You know, so so bring that, and then also I wanted to say the uh, you would you make sure not to ab advocate for more taxes to to fund that position, and like I said, going and I think you mentioned the audit. So, but thank you. We're living out of time, so if you can please uh, one minute each this question thank you very much there is a process right now that's in place as far as um, what it entails as far as reaching people out um, I toured the warehouse is a perfect example 30,000 square foot warehouse there's been items that have been in there for for over 10 years and even longer so at some point when we've contacted somebody so many times um, even in the parking lot there's a Winnebago out there there's over 10 different vehicles we're not a used car parking lot, we're not a storage facility. So we've, um, and I know John does it now, they exhaust all their options with, with a lot of these people. But at some point, you know, again, what happens if we run out of room? Now the county has to pay for additional storage. So we have to shorten that time up and start uh, tightening up the, the policies as far as um, how much time is allocated to, you know, releasing that money and, and those personal belongings. Do they actually go after the Mexican? Absolutely, yeah. They're not, yeah, yeah I, I did speak to John about this, and he said there's a process for sending letters and emails and phone calls and certified mail, and he said they send letters all around the world. In, in a lot of these places, we don't even know if they're necessarily getting them because you know the address are, um, you know, are unknown, but there is a process that's set up, 
Absolutely. So we get, we're going to continue that process, but we absolutely have to shorten it up. And that might take some legislative pieces that's involved with you know, the law side of things, but um, it's not impossible. But we'll do it. So with respect to the question regarding uh, raising awareness, the, the state bar um, and also other local specialty bars all offer free will drafting classes for folks. Right? Um, there are classes for veterans. And in fact, actually, it's not just a class where veterans can learn how to do their own will. The folks sit down with an attorney who's providing pro bono time to do their will at no charge whatsoever. Right? And these go on all the time. But, you know, obviously a lot of folks don't know about this. And so we've got to raise awareness about that. Um, and that is something that is not going to cost the, the office a lot of time or resources. Just send it out to community partners like, like Veterans in Politics and say, please share, please tell your constituents that there's this event going on today or, you know, in a week. And, you know, all veterans who don't have an estate plan, come in. We'll help you do a simple will. We'll help you get your powers of attorney done in case something happens to you and you need your family to step in, right? Um, and that's not with death, but respect to like, disability, right? Um, so that's out there. And we can do just a little bit better job, all of us together, to promote those resources and not take away from the, the Office of the Clark County Public Administrator. And certainly with respect to, and I, my apologies, I'll try to wrap this up right quick. There's the other part of the question. Yes, the, the effort to find folks um, before saying, you know what, it's got to go to the state for the educational purposes, that, that's, that is going to continue. Um, if there are any additional things that I can do, I will I'll get in there and find out to be sure. A lot of times we want to pull credit and do other types of uh, person searches to see whether or not there are, again, other potential family members that may step in. But uh, absolutely, we can see that work. I think it says, it says in the Bible that your uh, wise men gives their, their children's children stuff, so hopefully you guys will pursue that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Mitchell T. Tracy. I'm the moderator for the meeting. I'm also a candidate for Clark County Commission District F. We'd like to thank our panel. We'd also like to thank our sponsors, Ron Key for Clark County Treasurer, Michael Broadway Real Estate, Real Water, Lakeside Business Suites. We're going to give you, uh, gentlemen, both one minute for closing. Thank you. Um, again, thank you very much for taking the time to, to sit down with us and, and ask us these questions. Um, we really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, earn your endorsement. Um, I will say that uh, recently I received the endorsement of the Clark County Firefighters, and I also received the, the endorsement of the nonpartisan uh, Nevada Veterans Council. I was the only candidate in this race to receive that, that recognition. And I assure you that should you endorse me and vote for me, and ask your friends to vote for me, that I won't let you down. This won't be a stepping stone. And I'll continue to serve the public the best way possible for years and years to come. Thank you very much. The public and whole will be endorsing me, and that's what's most important. I respect all the different organizations I have interviewed. I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, made some great friends along the way. But at the end of the day, this is about the public. And I've been doing uh, nonprofit work for the last five years, law enforcement. I was an educator. I'm also a Gulf War veteran, I fought for my country. So this is about the public, and I am the public. Thank you for inviting me, Airman Freddie, your future Clark County Public Administrator.